Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for taking the time now to join us for this important conversation on piloting state-level committees to address the serious crisis of toxic air quality. My special thanks to my good friend, Sri T.S. Singhdeoji, Honorable Minister for Health in the Government of Chhattisgarh, for bringing together this group of eminent ministers and legislators from his state on this subject in what I hope is the first and a larger campaign in the fight for clean air. As a board member and the India Head of Air Quality Asia, which has organized this webinar, I thought it would be useful to begin this webinar by formally introducing the organization and its leadership who have joined us for today's call. Air Quality Asia, or AQA, is an international air quality advocacy group, which has since its inception in 2016, spearheaded parliamentary and legislative action as a model towards a critical goal of securing a breathable future for Asia. With ongoing projects in a select few South Asian countries, like India, of course, Indonesia, the Philippines, AQA has in each of these countries worked to support and to bring legislators together in order to develop strong policy frameworks that can deliver measurable improvements in air quality. Today, the organization is represented by its president and convener, Ms. Shazia Rafi, who will be speaking about the organization's works shortly. Mr. Matthew J. Nolan, treasurer and board member, and prior to that, a veteran member of the Irish Parliament, and myself. Also from AQA on this webinar are senior staff members, Dorota piotrowska Belka, Reza Murati, and Vinay Ayer. In a lot of their work, AQA works with a number of partner organizations and donor groups <coughs> whose support, including for this webinar, has played a critical role in enabling the organization to deliver strong results in South Asia. I'd also like to introduce and thank my fellow Fletcher School alum, Mr. Vikas Mehta and, and Kartikeya Singh from SED, as well as Ms. Shweta Narayan for their efforts in bringing this group together. With this, may I please request the Honorable Health Minister of Chhattisgarh, Sri T.S. Singhdev, to formally introduce his esteemed colleagues who've joined us for this conversation, following which I'd like to request Shazia Rafi to share a brief presentation on Air Quality Asia. T.S. Singhdev, sir, sir we have, the floor is yours. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. And uh, it is a great privilege, a great honor that you have bestowed on us, sir, to allow us to be associated with you personally and with this organization, which has uh, uh, extremely far-reaching goals, goals that would uh, safeguard the better living and probably the existence of mankind in times to come. Uh, with me uh, today, sir, we have... Uh, our very senior minister, Mohammad Akbarji, who is the Minister for Environment and Forest. We have uh, with us key man, sir. And he's been kind. He was very tied up, but he's been very kind to join us. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Jay Singh Agarwal, another minister, Minister for Revenue. And he represents uh, the Korba constituency, one of the key uh, polluting uh, industrial areas uh, in Chhattisgarh. We also have with us Sailesh Pandeji, who is the uh, MLA from Bilaspur. Bilaspur is again one of the cities uh, which are uh, industrial and uh, on the border of polluting power plants. We have with us uh, uh, Mrs. Ambika Singh Deo, uh, who is a member in the Legislative Assembly from uh, Bekunpur, Korea district. Again, Korea is a district where we have a large number of uh, coal mines. Uh, we have Selish Pandeji I've introduced, Vikram Mandaviji. He is a member from the Bijapur constituency, which is the far south of uh, Chhattisgarh, left-wing extremism affected district, uh, budding tribal leader. We have uh, Lakeshwar Baghelji, who is the president of the Bastar Tribal Development Authority, which covers the entire commissionery of Bastar, the 12 MLA constituencies of Bastar. We have uh, Srimati Channi Sahuji, who is a, a member of the Legislative Assembly from Rajnangao district. She has a strong 
uh, family background in agriculture. And we should also see agriculture as contributing to air pollution in uh, whichever form. Uh, then uh, Moham Markanji, who is the president of our uh, party unit, political party unit in the state, unfortunately, he has contracted COVID, uh, Corona, okay. and he is in the hospital. Uh, we all wish him well. And, yes, please uh, convey this, our wishes uh, also. We will, sir. And Amitesh Shuklaji, he is likely to join us. He is again a senior MLA. Uh, he has been a minister in the earlier government of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, he will be joining us soon, sir. So this is the 11 member committee you have nominated, sir. Thank you very much, uh, T.S. Singhdev, sir. I think this is an extremely impressive heavyweight committee that Chhattisgarh has come up with uh, to deal with this very important issue. I'd now like to uh, invite Shazia Rafi, the president and convener of Air Quality Asia, to make a brief presentation on AQA's work internationally, particularly with regard to the subject before us and with the UN SDGs. Shazia, the floor is yours. Honorable Dr. Tharoor, Honorable Minister T.S. Dio, Honorable Ministers Akbar and Agrawal, Honorable Members of the Legislative Assembly. Honorable Nolan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, namaskar and good evening. On behalf of Air Quality Asia, I welcome you to our first state assembly level convening. We are grateful to the Honorable Health Minister for his critical leadership on clean air. I am particularly heartened by the MLAs who despite COVID-19 challenges have joined this effort in this committee. Allow me to share the role that parliamentarians have played in the global agreements on clean air and how AQA India, working with Chhattisgarh's new air quality committee, fits into this global framework. Air pollution is an accelerator of climate change. The same carbon emissions that speed up global warming make air quality worse. Air quality monitoring allows policymakers like you a real-time progress measure. AQA was established in November 2016 to implement the Clean Air UN SDGs 2030. AQA convenes parliamentarians, government officials, UN and development agencies, green finance um, and civil society to that end. The right to clean air was proposed at the Interparliamentary IPU meeting November 2013 by the Parliamentary Working Group on Clean Air. Clean air language was negotiated in SDGs 2030 by September 2015, with strong targets signed by all governments. So it is you, the, the legislators, who started this work on clean air. As you can see, the three clean air SDGs are very specific. They lay out the sources of air pollution and the implementation to be taken by governments. UN agencies, uh, WHO, UNEP, Habitat are assigned as monitors on progress for these SDGs. The World Bank, Asian Development Bank are the affiliated agencies to help fund the implementation of these SDGs. So that's the global framework. The challenge for South Asian governments is enormous. This slide is a pre-COVID map of air pollution in the Indo-Gangetic Plain from the Hindu Kush to the Bay of Bengal. Our region has the world's highest air pollution levels. Of the world's cities with the highest air pollution, 18 to 19 out of 20 are in South Asia. 13 to 14, depending on which year or day you are counting, are in India. In addition to the majority of deaths from respiratory illnesses, deaths from asthma, deaths from COPD, Air pollution also causes 36% of the deaths from lung cancer, 34% of stroke deaths, and 27 of deaths from heart disease. Most important for policymakers is the cost of air pollution to the economy. As you can see from the World Bank 2016 report, India had a 7.8% negative GDP impact in 2016. Later reports show a higher percentage as air pollution levels increase. Money is literally leaking out of the economy due to air pollution. Globally, it was about 5.3 trillion US dollars in 2016. It is much more now. These same funds could have been applied for positive development. 
when it comes to reversing the course, one often hears it's impossible. It will take decades. We have seen within weeks of the COVID-19 lockdown, air pollution drop dramatically across the globe. You can see in Delhi itself, blue skies returned. Nature restores itself if man's destructive activity can be curtailed. But of course, we can't permanently shut down the economy. And as you can see, if policies are not changed, pollution returns. And this is across the globe that it returns. So we must and can build back better. We know from data, which there is no time to show you, from the US, Europe, Mexico, Chile, China, that air quality improvement policies work. India is already on that path with the National Clean Air Plan. I understand Chhattisgarh State Resources Board has also installed 20 monitors. But with monitoring, there must be targets, timelines, emission standards for power plants, industry, transport, including moving the transport sector to electric vehicles. Even more important than that is what we are currently doing. With one hand, we are doing the right thing by doing the transition to renewable energy and electric vehicles. But this is a clear visual of the soot going into your lungs, depending on which euro level fuel is currently allowed on the roads. This is Euro 2 to Euro 5. Euro 6 is zero emission. So that would be an empty bottle. So whose job is it to get implementation of goals and standards and laws done? The bulk of the responsibility and the power to implement is with national and state governments working together with city administration. Air has no boundaries, either within nations or across nations. For example, carbon pollution from China's coal plants crosses the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean in the world, in two weeks to land on California's shores. We know viscerally how crop burning by farmers in some states affects air quality across India's northern plains. You legislators, federal and state, are ideally suited to building this implementation framework within the state and interstate. You are also political leaders who on the national and international stage can build cooperation through your skills as deal makers, communicators, lawmakers, and ultimately enforcers with oversight on government and industry. Thank you again in the midst of this global pandemic to have affirmed your commitment for all our right to clean air. Dhaniawad. Thank you so much, Asya. That was uh, extremely punchy and at the same time brief. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, your presentation on AQA's uh, role in global interventions on this issue. Uh, I've been asked to take the opportunity to briefly share with this distinguished gathering some of the interventions we have been doing in India, and indeed my own personal involvement in this fight for blue skies. Uh, I'm <laughs> struck by the irony of addressing this eminent group from New Delhi on the issue of air pollution at a time when what was once the worst place in India for clean air has been experiencing record levels uh, of, as you saw, blue skies in that photograph near India Gate. Uh, even as we, as a society, contend with the devastating effects of COVID-19, accompanied by the gradual unlocking of the national lockdown. One silver lining along our collective clouds has been impossible to miss, and that's been the bright blue skies and cleaner air we've all been allowed to enjoy. Um, and, and the AQI, the Air Quality Index in Delhi, has actually largely remained at breathable levels. And whenever we have these monsoon showers, the air quality gets even better. But of course, this is an exception rather than the norm. And it'll be uh, foolish in my part to celebrate our clean skies at a time when millions of our fellow citizens are suffering either directly from the pandemic or indirectly as a result of the complete slowdown in economic activity that the lockdowns have precipitated. How can we celebrate such a victory when laborers who built the cities and towns we live in are on the roads and highways in a desperate attempt to walk back to their own hometowns? How could we have celebrated clean air knowing that in many ways it came from a complete shutdown of the economy and the industry that has directly hurt millions of our fellow countrymen, including 21 million salaried employees who've lost their jobs? How can we celebrate uh, our blue skies knowing that when the economic activity jump starts and efforts are made to make up for lost time, 
the smog will once again return. And including, especially during the winter months, which are the worst months, and those are just around the corner. So the simple answer is we cannot be lulled into a false sense of complacency. We have to find a way of creating meaningful livelihoods for our people while giving us clean air so we can live in good health. Now, as a concerned citizen, as well as a board member of AQA and an MP, and I've personally suffered the wheezing and coughing that comes with Delhi's foul air, uh, I thought this was a problem that was critical to our development concerns. And so each year from 2017, when I joined the banner of AQA, 2017, 2018, 2019, I brought together a group of civil society stakeholders, healthcare experts and practitioners, technical experts, and a few fellow parliamentarians to an annual closed door discussion on the magnitude of the current crisis of toxic air quality across India. In these three years, we dealt not only with the current state of air quality, but, I, uh, but we also extended the deliberations to what we could possibly do as concerned citizens and elected representatives to create a national action plan to address the issue. And our uh, platform since 2017 has brought together some of the most accomplished and experienced stakeholders on this issue of vital national importance. Parliamentarians across the aisle uh, got together and finally uh, last year, representatives from the Government of India, including the Honorable Union Minister for the Environment, Sri Prakash Javreka, addressed last year's gathering and gave us a comprehensive ideation of the government strategies to address uh, air pollution. Now, while during the course of our roundtables, extensive deliberations occurred on the economic and health-related impacts uh, of air pollution. So I'm very pleased we have the health minister of Chhattisgarh and the environment minister. We also increasingly realized there were two fundamental deficiencies in the existing campaign for clean air. The first had to do with the lack of political and legislative capital to address the issue. In fact, the issue of air quality in some ways is like our concerns about foreign policy. I've always said that there is no BJP foreign policy or Congress foreign policy. There's only Indian foreign policy. Similarly with air quality, our political differences on the subject must end with the beginning of the stratosphere. You know, once we as a breathing air, no one can fence off uh, the, the, the air in, in, in the, in that we're breathing. And, and honestly, despite the magnitude of the crisis, it shocks me there's been so far limited action on involvement in this issue. I, I can tell you very frankly that in my first couple of years around table, I found it impossible to attract a BJP participant. Um, and it was only in my third year when the minister got onto it that we were able to, to move ahead. So it's been, a, it's been a grind. But policymakers, political outfits, think tanks, legislators, we all have to get together on this. And, and the honest truth is, and I, I was so gratified when my friend Sri T.S. Singhdeoji agreed to do this, because the fact is that air quality has not been an electoral issue in India. And even public health has not been an electoral issue. Yeah. In, in the U.S., for example, where I believe you're based, Shazia, still, um, the uh, prime concern for 41% of the voters in the most recent midterm elections, 2018 in the U.S., was health care. In India, neither public health generally nor air pollution specifically has yet won or lost an election for any Indian politician. So for someone like Mr. Singhdeo and his very distinguished colleagues, the ministers and the MLAs to join us, it shows a vision and, a, and, and an imagination that is by and large still absent in many Indian politicians. So I, I, I'm particularly grateful they've joined us because you know the premium placed on conventional indices of economic growth, jobs, poverty eradication, Garibi Hatao, financial growth, everyone now understands growth is important, food security. These are things that voters understand and relate to. Uh, in a country where the majority of our citizens are living below the uh, near the poverty line, uh, obviously this is an important issue, and and air quality is seen as a sort of upper class luxury. The poor can't afford it. That's not true. The poor are biggest victims uh, of of poor air, and uh, the rising levels of smog and poor air hurt them. The factory workers, the people living near spewing uh, sources of 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 air pollution. And of course, those with financial resources will turn to short-term remedies, air purifiers. Uh, I even uh, started, because of my asthma, I started wearing a personal air purifier around my neck, a thing called an air tamer. I don't know if it works, but anything to 
counteracts the poor air in this in the city. N95 masks. Um, uh, and of course, uh, now with the, with the COVID, we are all temporarily working from home in order to avoid stepping out and inhaling the toxic air around us. It's the poor who have no choice. Those whose lives are dominated by the need for a daily wage, the basic necessities of sustenance. For them, the air around them can really affect their lives and they have to endure it because they have to live. So I must say that the argument that the political class can afford to ignore air quality because it doesn't affect the poor who are the majority of voters, that is wrong. And all of us politicians listening today, we must understand the majority of our voters are victims of bad air. And it's not a class issue, it is a mass issue. And I, I really want to stress that very, very hard with, with all of us listening today, because we want to take this campaign to the political class of India, starting today with Chhattisgarh. Let me stress the need for an energized and effective campaign for, for clean air uh, is also complicated by the way in which um, uh, we as a country have approached the problem. You know, the, the government uh, uh, has a very spare, sparse sort of national clean air program which is not terribly actionable. It covers 100 on, 102 centers in a country with thousands of centers. The media just focuses on, on bad air during Diwali because the Diwali firecrackers make <clears throat> the air worse. There's no sustained engagement with a crisis that affects urban and rural India equally. We need to get beyond the New Delhi-centric narrative and begin to incorporate a more holistic approach, including from within our states that in many ways at the front lines of this crisis. Not enough has been done to capture the realities and challenges uh, that, that are faced by our states. And this has hampered policy making on the topic. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to take so long. We'll, I'll wrap up because I really want to hand it back to you in a minute. I just want to say that we really have to um, work with you. And that's why we reached out to Chhattisgarh. Um, and I, I really am grateful to Sri T.S. Singh, the Ajay, for offering remarkable leadership, seeing merit in the idea of bringing this distinguished group together and therefore helping us to bring a new state-level perspective into this national campaign. I'm cautiously optimistic. I think we can um, seize the opportunity that COVID-19 has shown us. It's shown us the, the importance of investing in more effective public health. It's shown us the benefits and joys of cleaner air and bluer skies. We have to try and protect uh, Indians to have better lives and, and to have healthier lives by actually uh, winning the fight against Corona. And at the same time, when we return to better livelihoods, uh, let us remember that, uh, that the livelihoods make lives worth saving. But if we don't have lives to live in health, we will not be able to make success of our livelihoods. So I'm going to stop there. And I, I request my good friend, the Honorable Minister for Health, Chhattisgarh, T.S. Singh to address this gathering. And, and after he does that, I think uh, uh, with his inaugural address, we will then move on to a, a moderated discussion amongst all of us in this talk. Shri T.S. Singh Ji, the floor is yours, sir. Sir, thank you. I feel inadequate uh, addressing a forum of uh, this eminence. Uh, but since you have given me the responsibility for Chhattisgarh, I would like to uh, put Chhattisgarh issues and a few general issues uh, on the platform. Like you said and like Shazia ji mentioned, that air pollution would be uh, being seen in uh, two perspectives majorly. One, uh, the quality of air impacting the uh, environment itself, leading to global warming, leading to melting of ice caps, leading to increasing the uh, sea levels, leading to submergence, uh, all sorts of things, changing weather patterns, ch changing farming patterns, all sorts of things that would be uh, consequential to uh, air, uh, to global warming. The other aspect uh, would basically be impact on health. I would like to mention an uh, instance where uh, my senior colleague, Mohammad Akbarji, mentioned to me about a polluting unit in Bilaspur. He was on tour and uh, he was crossing a factory where he said that he went and saw himself how soot had uh, collected on uh, mango leaves and other trees and uh, rooftops and there was no way in which uh, 
uh, he did not take action and the uh, activity of the plant was stopped until uh, he was satisfied that the pollution levels were under control. Uh, he would not allow the industry to continue. So this is the level of commitment we have in our fellow uh, colleagues who are looking after uh, forest and environment and also transport. He is the Minister for Transport too, uh, where he is uh, taking uh, considered uh, decisions. Chhattisgarh happens to be amongst those uh, states which has a uh, very high number of mines and uh, mineral-based uh, industries. And air pollution is amongst the biggest threats to the health of the people uh, today and in times to come. Uh, we are uh, witnessing uh, a large number of cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, among other ailments. And uh, there are shocking reports of people who are close to industrial areas, Raigad, where a very high percentage of the population is afflicted by uh, diseases directly related to mining and uh, air pollution. A very large number, sir. As far as uh, mitigation uh, is concerned, we have the State uh, Health Resource Center through which we are taking initiatives. The, these are, I would not hesitate to say, formal in nature today. They do not have teeth, they do not have much impact. We are in the initial stages where uh, international views are percolating to state levels and we are attempting to focus on these issues uh, more seriously. Lots and lots have to be done. We are probably uh, probably in uh, primary school yet, sir, as far as uh, steps uh, regarding these uh, areas would be concerned. So we are looking at uh, air pollution through the state health uh, uh, resource center. Then in 2019, there was an integrated disease surveillance project uh, for acute respiratory illness surveillance in the districts of Raipur, Korba, and Raigad. I would uh, just remind all the members present on the panel, uh, the graphic you showed indicated Raipur as number four on the international uh, most poly air polluted uh, cities of the world. We were sadly at uh, number four. Today, again, with uh, Delhi's uh, blue skies and uh, uh, clear, clear air, uh, Raipur pollution levels are down thanks to COVID, I think, and thanks a lot to our minister who has been very proactive in taking stringent measures to ensure that uh, uh, implements are put to curtail pollution. So COVID and steps, it has led to an improvement which we thought would not be possible for uh, air quality in uh, Raipur. The health infrastructure, uh, which uh, has uh, resource constraints, but we are uh, inching towards universal healthcare goals. Uh, we are inching towards the uh, SDG goals and hoping to reach them, if possible, sooner than 2030. Awareness needs to be uh, got to people. They are living in a world where they think that uh, cynically, it, Probably gods have this for us. Probably the forces that we have for us. We are better off than we were in our villages. We are probably having a better standard of living. They are not aware, sir. They are not aware at all of the health hazards uh, they are uh, living with and the conditions under which they are living. Those uh, steps that we are taking would also uh, include plans for a 200-bedded center of excellence for pulmonary diseases in Raipur, and a 30-bedded dedicated unit in every medical college. Uh, these are times to come, uh, sir, and the district hospitals would also be having units for these. But the impact today, how do we deal with units which are running? The government of Chhattisgarh, our minister will probably let you know, uh, has already decided to close down two of those uh, uh, units, 250 megawatt units, which are over the 25-year uh, age uh, line. So we are we are into that. We are proactively into that. All those industries which are being identified as uh, not able to be uh, renewable are also under the uh, scanner for being closed down. The concentration of uh, PM 2.5 particles was found in the State Health Resource Center monitoring program to be 186 micrograms and 
between that and 549.9 micrograms, uh, which is 3.1 to 9.1 times uh, of the desired uh, levels. The national standard is, I believe, 60 micrograms per cubic meter. So the monitoring showed us that our levels were to that extent, high to that extent. Manganese concentrations in eight out of the nine samples taken were of uh, standards not acceptable by the US Environment Protection Agency norms, which are 0 0.05 micrograms, or the World Health Organization safety guidelines, which are uh, 0 0.15 uh, micrograms. The, these are the results. Nickel concentration exceeded the WHO guidelines. Uh, it is a major risk for cancer. Manganese, uh, like I mentioned, sir, was eight to nine times. And uh, uh, most environments predominantly were indicating the presence of silica. The crystalline silica was present in almost every sample, and it contributed to amongst the major factors for uh, air pollution leading to health uh, quality factors. Lead concentration, sir, too, exceeded the US EPA standards in two of the nine samples uh, that we took. So uh, these are the uh, facts that we are uh, living with, uh, facts which have come to light, and challenges which we have to overcome. The Center for Science and Environment in uh, one of its uh, recent uh, findings indicated that 70% of the thermal power plants, this is the national level, won't meet the new emission standards for sulfur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide or particulate matter, the deadline given 2022. 70% of our units uh, would not be meeting these standards. And sir, Chhattisgarh uh, will not be an uh, exception uh, for this. An estimated 44.483 million tons of coal has uh, been uh, identified in 12 of the coal fields of the northern portion of Chhattisgarh. That is the Raigarh, Sarbuja, Korea and Korba areas. Uh, as chance would have it, uh, all, almost all four of these districts are represented on your panel today. Uh, I was not fully aware of this report, uh, but your panel has uh, people from representing these uh, areas. What we are seeing today, sir, as the biggest health risk is that at every step of generation of electricity by coal-fired thermal power units, the mining, the transportation, the washeries, the preparation of the power plants, the combustion, the disposal of uh, post-combustion uh, wastes, they are very serious risk hazards uh, to the health of the miners, the plant workers, and the residents in the vicinity. Nine out of every 10 living person near Raigar's coal mine has reported ill, sir. Nine out of ten. So these are the facts that we are uh, uh, that are staring at us, and these are the challenges uh, which we have to overcome as public represented, uh, representatives and legislators, and as members of your esteemed team. Uh, you are helping us focus on this extremely uh, uh, effectively, sir. The unregulated mining is again providing, uh, proving to be a disastrous uh, impact factor on the health of the uh, miners, sir. So these are some of the facts. You would know more of them, so I'm not going into uh, very much more of uh, details. But these are the facts uh, under which we are today functioning in Chhattisgarh. Uh, we recognize the need for clean air. There is, a, we would be fishes without water very soon if we don't uh, get our minds and don't get our efforts directed towards correcting these uh, uh, issues and correcting these matters. And we await your guidance. Uh, this has been a coincidence and a privilege for us. Shazia said, uh, he said that uh, this happens with the first body meeting. I, I had thought it would not be so. But we are extremely lucky, sir, and see the opportunity you have given us that uh, worldwide, probably this is uh, your uh, uh, baby, your child, you're rearing up, and it is uh, having the opportunity to be the uh, first public representative body 
who would like to be behind you be fully supportive of your efforts fully supportive of the efforts of the asia body and uh, the world body the more you let us know the more we will be able to put our minds uh, to correcting uh, things in the soonest possible time sir so thank you thank very you. much thank you. thank you so very much my dear friend uh, shri tia singh dev i honestly think that uh, your uh, command of the issues are deeply encouraging for all of us because um the fact that uh, with your leadership and enthusiasm the government of chatisgarh is engaging so much with this issue is a matter of comfort for someone like me who's been banging his head against the wall for the last 3 years trying to get our national level politicians engaged and energized on this issue i thought we might move to a, a discussion amongst others here and since we have the privilege of the attendance uh, of uh, chatisgarh's minister of the environment uh, shri mohammad akbar I wonder whether he might wish to say a few words himself uh, on the broad themes that uh, you and I have already addressed. Uh, Shri Akbar ji, would you like to take the floor, sir? Ji, namaskar. Chhattisgarh Paryavarana Pradushan ke mamle mein kuch particular area ko chhodkar Chhattisgarh total 1 lakh 35 hazar square kilometer. Isme 44.2 percent forest area. जिसके कारण पर्यावरण काफी संतुलन और नियंत्रण में है छत्तीसगढ़ को यदि देख ले एक लाख पैंतीस हजार वर्ग किलोमीटर में तो केवल ऐसे क्षेत्रों में जो औद्योगिक क्षेत्र हैं, जहां पे इंडस्ट्रीज हैं, उसमें रायपुर भिलाई बिलासपुर कोरबा रायगढ़ राजनांदगांव दुर्ग पॉल्यूशन की समस्या केवल यहाँ पर है बाकी पूरे छत्तीसगढ़ में फोर्टी फॉरेस्ट एरिया जहां पर पॉल्यूशन की कोई समस्या नहीं है और इन सात शहरों में पॉल्यूशन की समस्या है क्योंकि ये औद्योगिक क्षेत्र है बड़े बड़े इंडस्ट्रीज हैं इन इंडस्ट्रीज में क्योंकि छत्तीसगढ़ में बहुत बड़े पैमाने में कोल ब्लॉक्स हैं आयरन ओर हैं और मिनरल्स होने के कारण बहुत बड़ी संख्या में यहाँ पे सीमेंट उद्योग भी हैं जो सीमेंट प्लांट हैं सीमेंट बनाते हैं ये अभी वर्तमान में इनके कारण इंडक्शन फर्नेस रोलिंग मिल पावर प्लांट आयरन प्लांट पेरोलाइज प्लांट बहुत बड़ी संख्या में यहाँ स्थापित हैं और सीमेंट फैक्ट्रीज भी यहाँ पे लगे हुए हैं इनको नियंत्रण करने के लिए लगातार जो चिमनियों से धुआं निकलता है तो डस्ट को नियंत्रित करने के लिए ई सिस्टम यहाँ पे लगातार मॉनिटरिंग है वो ऑनलाइन है जैसे भी वायलेशन की स्थिति आती है तो ऑनलाइन इसका कंट्रोल हम लोग करके देख लेते हैं और उनके खिलाफ तत्काल फिर कार्रवाई भी होती है वाणिज्य गतिविधियों में गाड़ियों की संख्या भी बहुत अधिक है मैं ट्रांसपोर्ट मिनिस्टर भी हूं और उसके लिए भी लगातार पर्यावरण की जांच हम लोग करते हैं जिसके कारण से ये पूरा नियंत्रण में रहे रायपुर भिलाई कोरबा को नॉन अटेनमेंट सिटीज की श्रेणी में और औद्योगिक क्षेत्र क्लस्टर सिलतरा और रायपुर क्लस्टर को गंभीर रूप से औद्योगिक प्रदूषित माना गया है प्रदूषण को नियंत्रण के लिए एक नदी तट वृक्षारोपण का कार्यक्रम छत्तीसगढ़ सरकार ने जो प्रमुख पांच नदियां हैं उन नदियों में नदी तट वृक्षारोपण का दोनों नदियों के किनारे में पांच पांच सौ मीटर का चौड़ाई के वृक्षारोपण का करने का प्लान है और हर हर साल साढ़े चार से पांच करोड़ पौधा रोपण का कार्य भी छत्तीसगढ़ की सरकार जो है वो वन विभाग के जरिए इसको करती है जो कोल ब्लॉक के एरिया हैं कोल ब्लॉक के एरिया में वर्तमान में स्थिति आई थी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया के वेबसाइट में पांच कोल ब्लॉक ऐसे हैं जो छत्तीसगढ़ सरकार ने उन्नीस वर्ग किलोमीटर का एक एरिया डिक्लेयर किया है एलिफेंट रिजर्व जो लेमरू के नाम से अब उसमें कैचमेंट एरिया हसदेव रिवर कैचमेंट एरिया अरन रिवर कैचमेंट एरिया डिफरेंट टाइप के जो एन हैं और जो समाज सेवी संस्थाएं हैं उन्होंने मांग की है कि ये जो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया के वेबसाइट में पांच कोल ब्लॉक हैं ये कोल ब्लॉक उस कैचमेंट एरिया में है और यदि ये कोल ब्लॉक का नीलाम हो जाएगा तो जो एलिफेंट रिजर्व हमने बनाया है उन्नीस वर्ग किलोमीटर का ये इस उद्देश्य की पूर्ति नहीं होगी तो छत्तीसगढ़ की सरकार ने माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी ने भारत सरकार को पत्र लिखा फॉरेस्ट मिनिस्टर एनवायरनमेंट होने कारण मैंने भी भारत सरकार को पत्र लिखा और वहां से 
उन्होंने रिप्लाई दिया है और वर्तमान में जो स्थिति ऐसे संकेत मिले हैं कि ये कोल ब्लॉक नीलाम से हट जाएंगे तो पर्यावरण की सुरक्षा के हिसाब से छत्तीसगढ़ सरकार का एक ये बहुत बड़ा कदम कहा जा सकता है वर्तमान में हमारे सामने जो सबसे बड़ी समस्या है फ्लाई एश और ये जो पावर प्लांट से फ्लाई एश निकलते हैं इसके डिस्पोजल के लिए एनजीटी नेशनल ग्रीन ट्रिब्यूनल ने समय समय पे डिफरेंट ऑर्डर्स दिए हैं लेकिन हर पावर प्लांट में बहुत बड़े पैमाने में फ्लाई एश है जिसके निराकरण के बारे में बहुत ठोस कोई कार्रवाई नहीं हो पा रही है क्योंकि जो कोल ब्लॉक हैं या बड़े बड़े माइंस हैं जिनके बड़े बड़े गड्ढे हैं तो उन कोल ब्लाइंस में उसको भरने के लिए बार बार कहा जाता है लेकिन वो बहुत अच्छी प्रगति इसमें नहीं कहा जा सकती हालांकि पर्यावरण विभाग इसमें लगातार प्रयास कर रहा है और आने वाले समय में इसके अच्छे संकेत तो और अच्छे परिणाम मिलेंगे वाटर बॉडीज को लेकर एन की तरफ से है कि जो भी वाटर बॉडीज है उसको री करना है यदि पुराने तालाब हैं तो उन तालाबों को भी री करके फिर से जैसे वो पुरानी स्थिति में थे उस तरीके से उसको मेंटेन करने वाली बात सामने आई है वर्तमान में एयर क्वालिटी जो रायपुर शहर बिलासपुर शहर कोरबा शहर रायगढ़ और भिलाई इसके लिए ऑनलाइन सिस्टम में लगातार उसकी मॉनिटरिंग की जाती है और पर्यावरण विभाग और ट्रांसपोर्ट डिपार्टमेंट ट्रांसपोर्ट डिपार्टमेंट से भी जो वाहनों के लिए लगातार जांच की सुविधा यहाँ उपलब्ध है अधिकांश जो निर्माण के कारण जो बड़े बड़े सड़कों का निर्माण है उसके कारण भी जो पॉल्यूशन की स्थिति आती है तो उसमें ये फ्लाई एस वगैरह को यूज करें और उसका उसका उपयोग करने के बाद ताकि एक ऐसी स्थिति निर्मित हो कि फ्लाई एस को लेकर ज्यादा कोई बड़ी समस्या ना हो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया से एस से रिक्वेस्ट करके बहुत से जो पुराने खदाने हैं उनको हम लोगों ने लिया है और वहाँ फ्लाई एस भरने का हम लोग अभी वर्तमान में काम कर रहे हैं जो प्रमुख नदियां हैं और जो नाले हैं जो नदियों में जाकर जुड़ते हैं तो वहां पे जो बड़े शहर हैं जो पॉल्यूटेड एरिया है तो वहां पे एस प्लांट सीवरेज ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट भी निर्माण का काम बहुत तेजी से चल रहा है और आने वाले समय में इसका अच्छा परिणाम हमको मिलेगा बहुत अच्छा बहुत शुक्रिया अकबर साहब आप तो इस विषय पे जितने इंटरेस्ट ले लिए मैं बहुत खुश हूँ और मेरे ख्याल में हमें तो आगे बढ़ने के लिए बहुत सारी चीजें करनी है मैं आपसे ये भी पूछना चाहता था आ, कि ट्रांसपोर्ट के वजह से जितने भी पोल्यूशन और एनवायरनमेंट एनवायरनमेंट में हो रहे हैं आप इसके लिए कोई कॉन्क्रीट एक्शन दे चुके हैं जैसे दिल्ली में आपको पता है कि कंप्रेस नेचुरल गैस सारे बसेस सारे लॉरी सारे टैक्सी यहाँ कंप्रेस नेचुरल गैस पे चलती है पेट्रोल और डीजल पे नहीं ये मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता था कि क्या आप छत्तीसगढ़ में ऐसे कोई नियम के बारे में सोच रहे हैं जी छत्तीसगढ़ में सीएनजी को लेकर भी विचार चल रहा है और उसको लोगों को प्रोत्साहित करने के लिए भी हम लोगों ने प्रयास किया है लेकिन बहुत अधिक बहुत अच्छा अभी उसमें परिणाम प्राप्त नहीं हुआ क्योंकि यहाँ पेट्रोल डीजल का पेट्रोल डीजल और जो हमारा जो क्षेत्रफल है वो बहुत एक लाख पैंतीस हजार वर्ग किलोमीटर होने के बाद यदि शहर से हम क्रॉस करते हैं तो ये पांच सात जो शहरों के नाम मैंने लिए पॉल्यूशन केवल इसमें है लेकिन ये सीएनजी को लेकर यदि लंबी दूरी के जो वाहन चलते हैं तो वो लंबी दूरी के वाहन जो सीएनजी से चलने के लिए अभी उनको हम केवल प्रोत्साहित कर रहे हैं लेकिन परिणाम आया नहीं लेकिन हमारा प्रयास चल रहा है अच्छी बात है May I turn to our distinguished revenue minister if he's willing to say a few words about this subject? Good evening. Yes. Uh, Good evening, sir. Maa sa pranam, Akbar ji, aur Saheja madam. Main Chhatti Sadh ke mare mein vaise to Akbar saab ne bahut jankari di aur Baba saab ne bhi pura brief kiya hai. Main apna kuch sujaav dena chahta hu kyunki Chhatti Sadh ka most polluted shahar Korba jila hamara hai. तो वहाँ औद्योगिक जिला कहलाता है तो इसलिए मैं जानकारी देना चाहता हूँ कि इसके सुधार करने के लिए कुछ जो हवा में प्रदूषण है उसको कम करने के लिए आपके जो भारी उद्योग हैं उनको शहर से दूर स्थापित करना चाहिए और धीरे धीरे आधुनिक प्रदूषण मुक्त कारखानों की स्थापना की जाए हवा की गुणवत्ता सुधारने के लिए सार्वजनिक परिवहन को बढ़ावा दिया जाए तथा निजी वाहनों पर टैक्स बढ़ाया जाए तथा जन जागरूकता के द्वारा निजी वाहनों के बदले सार्वजनिक यातायात को अपनाने पर बल दिया जाना चाहिए 
प्रदूषण फैलाने वाले वाहनों को धीरे धीरे प्रतिबंधित करके उनका विकल्प हमको ढूंढना चाहिए जंगल की कटाई कम की जाए वृक्षारोपण को बढ़ावा देना हम लोग दे भी रहे हैं हमारी सरकार दे रही है बच्चों को स्कूली शिक्षा में वृक्षारोपण तथा पर्यावरण बचाने के बारे में शिक्षित किया जाए इस बारे में बच्चों को शिक्षित करने से इसका दुर्गामी लाभ प्राप्त होगा बिजली से चलने वाहनों को बढ़ावा दिया जाए तथा उनकी कीमत कम रखी जाए जैसे ई कार ई रिक्शा इत्यादि इसके विरुद्ध डीजल पेट्रोल से चलने वाले वाहनों पर टैक्स में बढ़ोतरी करना चाहिए और एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स के डाटा को देखते हुए जिन स्थानों पर प्रदूषण बढ़ रहा हो उन स्थानों पर कड़े निर्णय लेते हुए वाहनों तथा कारखानों के ऊपर प्रतिबंधात्मक कार्रवाई करने की आवश्यकता है शहरों में कमर्शियल वैक्यूम क्लीनर लगाए जाए जिससे प्रदूषण कम हो तथा एयर क्वालिटी इंडेक्स में सुधार हो सके इस प्रकार हमारे छत्तीसगढ़ में हमारी सरकार ने काफी प्रयास किए हैं जै, जैसे एसपी वगैरह का जो बताया अकबर साहब ने जो तो पहले उसका पालन नहीं होता था अब उसको करवाया जा रहा है ऑनलाइन किया गया है और जो प्राइवेट प्लांट हैं उन पर और कड़ाई करने की आवश्यकता है और जो सार्वजनिक उपकर में उन पर भी कड़ाई करने की आवश्यकता है और जो यातायात का जो दबाव है वो सबसे ज्यादा तो हमारे कोरबा जिले में है वैसे पूरे छत्तीसगढ़ में भी यातायात का दबाव है और इसलिए यातायात के दबाव को कम करने के लिए जो फोर लेन सड़कें सिक्स लेन सड़कों का निर्माण होना चाहिए उसमें अभी केंद्र सरकार उसमें ध्यान नहीं दे रही उसमें और ध्यान देने की आवश्यकता है जो काम रुके हुए हैं उन कामों को अगर फास्ट किया जाए तो आने वाले समय में इसका लाभ मिलेगा और छत्तीसगढ़ हरा भरा प्रदेश है और अकबर भैया ने महत्वपूर्ण जिम्मेदारी निभा रहे हैं इनके नेतृत्व में आदरणीय मुख्यमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में और सभी हमारे मंत्रिमंडल के साथ ही इन सब के संरक्षण में नेतृत्व में पर्यावरण संरक्षण के क्षेत्र में बेहतर कार्य हो रहा है मुझे खुशी है इस विषय पर चर्चा हेतु मुझे प्रूर साहब आपने मौका दिया कि एस सिंह देव जी ने जानकारी दी कि इसमें आपको जोड़ा गया है और आज आपके साथ बैठने का अवसर मिला वेरी वेरी थैंक यू देखिए हम तो बहुत बहुत आभारी हैं कि ऐसे सीनियर मिनिस्टर्स इस विषय पे आके एंगेज कर रहे हैं हमें ज्यादा समय बचे नहीं लेकिन अगर हमारे एमएलए एल जरा सा बात करना चाहेंगे अंबिका जी शैलेश पांडे जी कोई और जो आज मौजूद है एम इस विषय पे कुछ बोलना चाहेंगे अंबिका जी यू हैव यू हैव द फ्लोर सर मैं एक नोट लूंगा कि मैं चाहता हूं कि एक बार आप पूरे टीम के साथ अगर कोरबा में समय दें एक दिन तो बहुत कुछ हम लोग को सीखने का भी मिलेगा और उसका हमको लाभ मिलेगा जरूर जी आप मतलब आके मिलने के लिए तो हम अभी एक कोविड विषय को अभी पार होने दो लेकिन पर्यावरण के लिए विजिट मिलने के लिए पर्यावरण के लिए एक बार समय कोविड कंट्रोल होने के बाद आए भले एक बार बिल्कुल जरूर करेंगे जी बहुत शुक्रिया जय सिंह अग्रवाल जी अंबिका मैडम यू हैव द फोर मैम नमस्कार एंड गुड इवनिंग थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस प्रिविलेज वी आर ऑल ट्राइंग टू डू अ लिटिल बिट टू इम्प्रूव द एयर क्वालिटी बिकॉज अपार्ट फ्रॉम द टाउन एंड सिटी इज मैं द माइनिंग एरियाज आर वेरी मच अफेक्टेड ड्यू टू द कोल्ड डस्ट एंड द वर्स्ट पार्ट इज the people there don't realize the impact it is having on their health they are bothered that it is making the house and the roads dirty but they don't realize that the lungs too are getting affected we are doing our little bit but it will be an honor to work with you and under your guidance to improve the air quality the only advantage which we have here is the forest and the trees so that too needs a lot of protection the people in the forest they need to be encouraged to protect the forest but for that again they need need economic support so for all this we are all looking forward to your guidance 
Thank you, Ambikaji. Well, you know, you're, you're quite right about this, but 42% forest cover in Chhattisgarh did not save Raipur from uh, reaching that um, sad position of fourth in the world. As uh, Singhdevji pointed out, now, you have been making improvements. We want to encourage you on the path to completely uh, uh, reviving Chhattisgarh's reputation as a, as a green state and moving away from the bad news surrounding the capital city's uh, air quality. Shailesh Pandey ji, aap bhi kuch kehna chahenge? Floor is yours, sir. Sure, sure. Sure, sir. Thank you very much, sir. First, uh, I would like to pay regards to uh, Honorable Shashi Tharoor sahab uh, and Honorable T.S. Singh Dev sahab, Honorable Mohammad Akbar sahab, Honorable uh, Jaisi Agrawal ji and our Honorable colleagues, uh, Mrs. Ambika Singh Dev and uh, uh, Madam Shajia and Vinay. Uh, to all of you, good evening. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, connecting me this uh, important uh, and burning issue of the saving of environment. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to uh, say uh, something here. Uh, our government, uh, especially uh, environment, because we are discussing the uh, uh, about the environment issue. So our uh, uh, government Mr. Uh, and uh, our honorable minister, Muhammad Akbar Sahab, is doing very well. And he is uh, uh, almost uh, tightening the uh, all the uh, industries who are polluting the environment, especially in concern of uh, our Bilaspur area. The so Bilaspur is, a, I think, is the second number of city. And uh, uh, I, uh, I know our uh, Chief Minister Saab and our uh, Environment Minister, he is uh, doing very well uh, to uh, providing uh, quality life to the public and uh, i also uh, thank to our honorable minister baba sahab he is uh, giving a very good uh, uh, health services to all the citizens of the chhattisgarh and uh, we are trying to improve the uh, this kind of uh, problem uh, it is a burning issue and uh, uh, we also trying to uh, help our government to uh, for this matter. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Shereshi, a very constructive intervention, sir. And I must say that uh, we too join you in your uh, praise for the health interventions of our friend, uh, Shri Tia Singh Dev and, and the Chhattisgarh government on the whole. Uh, we are running out of time. And before I turn the floor to our international board member, Shri Matthew Nolan, to, uh, to wrap up, I do want to request one non-politician, uh, Shri Rajendra Chandak from MSF, the esteemed uh, Local non-governmental organization is also with us. And I request some very brief remarks from him before I give it to, uh, to uh, uh, a distinguished former parliamentarian, Mr. Nolan, to end the meeting. Uh, Shri Chandak ji, the floor is with you, sir. This webinar is the first time I have been in the first time. In the air quality summit, I have been in the webinar. I have been in the first time in the first time in the first time. विश्व स्वास्थ्य संगठन की 2016 की रिपोर्ट के अनुसार छत्तीसगढ़ का रायपुर शहर विश्व में सातवां सबसे प्रदूषित शहर है इसी तरह केंद्रीय प्रदूषण नियंत्रण बोर्ड की 2017 की रिपोर्ट यह बताती है कि गंभीर प्रदूषित क्षेत्र की श्रेणी में कोरबा पांचवा प्रदूषित शहर है एक कितनी बड़ी विडम्बना है कि शिकागो यूनिवर्सिटी द्वारा किए गए शोध से खुलासा हुआ है कि वायु प्रदूषण से लोगों की उम्र चार वर्ष कम हो गई है वायु प्रदूषण मानव जाति के स्वास्थ्य के लिए गंभीर चुनौती बना हुआ है समय समय पर विभिन्न द्वारा किए गए अध्ययन के परिणाम काफी चिंताजनक है समस्या के निराकरण के लिए उच्च होगा प्रदूषण नियंत्रण निगरानी का दायित्व है उनकी यह जिम्मेदारी है कि वह यह सुनिश्चित करें इस दिशा में संतोषप्रद व प्रभावशाली कार्य किया जा रहा है छत्तीसगढ़ प्रदेश में विशेषकर प्रदूषित क्षेत्रों में प्राथमिकता के तौर पर कार्य करने की जरूरत है हमारे लिए संतोष और प्रसन्नता की बात है कि देश में सिर्फ छत्तीसगढ़ प्रदेश का चयन इस परियोजना पर कार्य करने हेतु किया गया है यह अवसर हमारे लिए न सिर्फ फायदेमंद है बल्कि प्रदेश की जनता के उत्तम स्वास्थ्य के लिए भी उपयुक्त है मायराम सुजन फाउंडेशन की ओर से हम आशा करते हैं कि 
माननीय श्री टी एस सिंहदेव स्वास्थ्य मंत्री छत्तीसगढ़ शासन व माननीय श्री शशि थरूर सांसद के मार्गदर्शन में प्रदेश में वायु प्रदूषण नियंत्रण के क्षेत्र में बेहतर परिणाम देखने को मिलेंगे थैंक यू सर वेरी थैंक यू राजेंद्र जी एंड लेट मी लेट मी नाउ हैंड ओवर टू अ डिस्टिंग्विश्ड सीनियर पार्लियामेंटेरियन फ्रॉम आयरलैंड मिस मैथ्यू नोलन डॉक्टर मैथ्यू नोलन टू ब्रिंग द प्रोसीडिंग्स टू अ क्लोज विद हिज कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क्स मैथ्यू नोलन यू हैव द फ्लोर सर थैंक यू एंड एक्सीलेंसीज डिस्टिंग्विश्ड पार्टिसिपेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन Uh, on behalf of Air Quality Asia, I want to thank you for your active, passionate, and committed engagement in this webinar on the inaugural convening of the Air Quality Committee in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Government of Chhattisgarh. This historic uh, meeting shows that the people of Chhattisgarh are ready and committed to improve air quality in their state, and given good example by their politicians. I think that's critically important. We hope that this first air quality committee in India will inspire other states to take a similar initiative at local level. Air pollution continues to be a significant health concern in Europe, especially in high density cities. Bad air contributes to significant levels of premature death and disease. Increasing levels of air pollution, especially fine particulates measured as PM2.5 are now recognized as among the most significant causes of premature death worldwide as well as causing disability and reduced life expectancy based on our experience in uh, the eu concerted action involving national and subnational state and provincial bodies and city agencies was required to ensure that regulatory requirements are actually enforced along with regulation urban layout transportation and infrastructure requirements are key factors typically under the control of cities and states themselves all of these efforts require the availability of adequate human and financial resources and therefore an appropriate and regular budget allocation indeed a multiannual uh, budget allocation is needed these in turn rely on solid public and political backing for the program of action establishing an effective administration is a gradual process it won't happen overnight and we don't expect it to happen overnight therefore changes in regulatory regi regimes under india's national clean air plan and state level plans needs the support and a budget of all states i want to give a special thanks in conclusion i want to give a special thanks to the honorable dr tharur Uh, chair and my fellow board member on air quality asia to the honorable ts singh deo minister for health uh, for your very fine contribution i must say i was very impressed by your level of knowledge and the detail in which you were able to go into the honorable ministers akbar uh, agrawal and distinguished members of the legislative assembly of chatisgarh this event would not have been possible without Vikas Mehta and Kartika uh, Singh from the Sitching SED fund i think i can't overemphasize how important this funding is to a small uh, organization like air quality asia we are deeply indebted and grateful for their continuous support and they are very genuine in ensuring that we do get uh, support there and uh, we all, i also want to thank uh, Suweta Narayan, uh, our expert, and my fellow uh, Air Quality Asia staff team, uh, headed by Shazia, Dorota, and John. So I think we've had a very good uh, opening meeting, and I wish you and your committee continued success. And hopefully, this will branch out into other states within India. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as far as Chhattisgarh is concerned, Singhdeo Sahib, we'll work together to take this forward. Uh, and i look forward to hearing yes. how your committee gets on and as uh, i think um, uh, i think it was uh, she jessing uh, agarwal suggested we all get together we will look forward to doing that once the uh, restrictions associated with the pandemic are behind us thank you all very much the meeting thank is you, adjourned sir. and we will be in touch thank you sir thank, thank you, you.